I want to begin with the first questions to all of you in the audience. Please raise your hands if you own at least one email address. Okay, that's good to see so many hands raised. By the way, is there anyone who doesn't have an email address in this auditorium? Okay, that's great to hear. Okay, uh, let's begin. I want to share an interesting story with you. This year, I attended WordCamp Asia, which happened in February in Bangkok, Thailand. Few days prior to the event, I received an email from one of the popular WordPress theme company. The content of the email says something like this. We are sponsoring WordCamp Asia. We are going to have our stall. Please visit our stall, meet our team members, and grab the swag. I have been using their product for a very long time, so I was excited to meet the team members. So what I did next? I responded to that email something like this. Hey, thank you for letting me know. I'm excited to meet your team members. Now, there are two things that might have happened. One, I might have received an email from them, or I might not have received an email from them. I want you all to guess how many of you believe that I received an email from them. Please raise your hands. Yes, I did receive an email from them, but sadly, it was an automated response, which was something that I had not expected. So through this incident, I want to share a valuable lesson with you all. If you are running any kind of email campaign, your customers are going to respond to your emails, and you need to make sure that you respond to your customers appropriately. If you don't, your customers are going to feel that they are being ignored, and who knows, they might even give bad ratings or stop using your product, which is something that you don't want. Let's move ahead. The topic of my presentation today is email marketing essential, effective strategies for better open rate and conversion. In this session, I will cover some of the strategies that I use in my company to improve the open rate. I'll also share some of the techniques that I use to improve the conversion. Apart from this, I'll also share some of the things that you should avoid if you are running any kind of email campaigns. Before we dive into the topic, here are a few things about me. Currently, I'm working as a Chief Product Officer at Codewing Solutions. In my career over five years, I have interacted with more than 15,000 of customers and probably sent more than 50,000 of emails. I have successfully run more than 250 plus email campaigns and my average campaign Statistics include more than 32% of open rate and more than 2% of click rate. So we all know about email marketing since we all have email and you might be receiving so many of emails on a regular basis. So what is email marketing actually and why people or businesses use email marketing? Email marketing is considered one of the effective medium to communicate with your customers. Because everyone owns an email, you can easily reach out to your customers, promote your product, get your feedback, and it is also considered one of the cheap and effective medium. Here are a few stats that highlight how important the email marketing is. There are four billion daily email users, and this number is expected to increase to 4.6 billion by 2025. So as you can see in the beginning, no one raised their hand when I asked if there is anyone who doesn't have an email address. So everyone, in fact, everyone present in this event has an email address. Moving ahead. 
99% of email users check their inbox on a regular basis, and some even check more than 20 times. 84.3 consumers say that they check their emails at least once a day. And this is something that I believe you can relate to yourself, with yourself as well. How many of you checked your email today? Okay, so this is something very common. Here's another stats that is more convincing for businesses. 64% of small businesses use email marketing to reach to their customers. Why? Because running ads are expensive, and email marketing, you can easily collect leads and easily send lengthy messages or any kind of promotional content at your own pace. So it's very effective to communicate with your audience. Still not convinced? Here an interesting fact by Sales Cycle 2022. 50% of people buy from email marketing emails at least once a month. Just imagine if this stats becomes true for you, how many conversion you will bring for your business. So all these stats that I share with you highlight how important the email marketing is. And I hope that if you are not doing any kind of email marketing, then you should definitely start looking into and seriously focus on doing email marketing for your business. So let's move ahead for what you have been waiting for. So how do you improve the open rate for your email campaigns? So before I do that, let me ask you one question. You want to run an email campaign. What is the first and foremost thing you need? Anyone in the audience? Yes. If you want to run an email campaign, you should at least have your own email address from where you want to send an email. Interesting one. Some people also say that you need to have a contact list or <laughs> something like that. Okay, let's move ahead. So one of the most important things that most businesses or company ignore is prioritizing the security of their domain. You should verify your domain SPF, DKIM, and DMARC record. And you need to make sure that those records pass for all of these three. You can use any kind of DNS editor to verify the record. And why are these records very important? So let's understand. SPF helps to protect sender and recipients from spam, spoofing, and phishing emails. On the other hand, DKIM verifies that no third party has tampered with the email content. On the other hand, DMARC is something very critical. It helps the administrator to protect their domain authority from attackers or exploiters. If you have the DMARC configured properly, no hackers or attackers can ruin your domain reputation by sending spammy emails. But let's suppose I don't configure these things. What happens? You'll be compromising the quality of your email, and it is going to affect your email campaign drastically. If you are running any kind of email campaign, you want to make sure that they land in their inbox, not in the spam. And if you have this record missing, you can be very sure that they will not land in their inbox, and it is more likely to land in their spam. Now, to run your email campaign very effective, you need to segment your audience. Why segment your audience? Because you want your campaign very specific to your audience. Let's suppose you have two types of products. One is a travel agency plugin. Another is maybe a multi-purpose theme. Now, one of your campaign is about how to go your travel business webs, travel business website. Then this content or email marketing campaign is only effective for the audience who are your travel product 
who are the users of your travel product, not the one that are, you, that are the audience of your multipurpose theme. So if you have segmented your audience, you can target this campaign only to these travel agency customers. So something like this. So what kind of custom, uh, segmentation can you create? You can create segmentation based on the products. You can also create segmentation based on the interest. You can also se create segmentation based on the activities. You can also create segmentation based on demographics. And if you do so, you can send customized email to only to those specific audience on their festival occasions. So these are some of the benefits. Now, one of the first things that your customers are going to see when they receive an email from you is the subject line. Now, you need to make your subject line very interesting, very intriguing, so that they are enticed to open your email. And how you do that? Here are a few suggestions. Try to keep it short and precise as much as possible. You can also create a sense of urgency or scarcity. You can also begin with asking a question. If possible, use some kind of actionable language. And try to use personalization as much as possible within your subject line. Let's see some examples that uses these five concepts. Okay. So here is one example. Last chance, Clark. Are you in for our exclusive gift? So as you can see here, Clark is the personalizations. And email marketing tool have this kind of tool that automatically uh, can grab the first name of your uh, subscribers. The last chance, we are also creating a sense of urgency. And we are asking a questions with an actionable language and curiosity. So the person who is reading this subject line will be excited to open this email to see what, it, what they have within the content. Because we are not disclosing what exclusive gift we have for them. Here's another example. Ready to grow your website traffic, Bruce, only five spots left. So here also we have used the same concept. We have used personalizations. We are creating a sense of urgency by using only five spots left. And we are also asking a questions, are ready to grow your website traffic. So somebody who is serious about growing their traffic are more interested to open this email address. And somebody who owns a website wouldn't want to miss this email for sure. Uh, let's move ahead. OK. The next and most important thing that you also need to consider is maintaining a healthy email list. Healthy email list basically means the list of contacts or subscribers who engage with your content. By engagement basically means who have opened your email, have clicked on your link at least once. By maintaining a healthy email list, what you do is you ensure that you are not, your campaigns are not going to be affected when you do mass email. Because once they engage with your campaign, it sends a positive signal to the receiving uh, domain. And it basically means that whenever you send uh, another email, it passes through that filter and it gets delivered in their inbox. So I highly encourage to make your email list healthy. Try to avoid sending emails to your unengaged contacts. And the benefits of this is that you'll have an improved deliverability. You'll have a better engagement rate. And since you will be sending the campaign to a very segmented list, it will be also very cost effective because email marketing campaign sometimes can be very costly. And as a result, since you'll be sending the campaign only to the specific audience who have engaged with the content, the chances of bounce rate will do that will be very minimal or almost zero. Now, 
people don't want to check their emails during the weekend or festival seasons because they want to spend a quality time with their friends and family. So if you are running any kind of email campaign, you need to make sure that you don't send them at a wrong time. Wrong time basically means don't send on the festivals time or during the weekends. If you have any kind of a deals, let's suppose in, Kato, in Nepal we celebrate a major festival called the Say. So what we can do is when the festival is coming, we make sure we announce the festival offer two to three days prior to the event so that people have their working days and you still can check the mail and grab the offer. Now, if you're really serious about email marketing, this is something you should definitely consider. It's costly, but this is something very game changer for the email marketers. Get a dedicated IP. And why is a dedicated IP very important? Here's an example of a, if you run your campaign on a shared IP. So let's suppose here are two bloggers, WordPress company and affiliate bloggers. And they are running their email campaign for Black Friday from the same email service provider. And they are on a shared IP. Basically means if these two people send an email campaign, they are going to be from the same email address. The WordPress company has a very healthy email list, has a good sending reputations, has optimized the sending time, and also verified the DNS record, the one that we talked initially. On the other hand, we also have an affiliate blogger who is running the campaign from the same IP, but it has unorganized list, bad sending reputations, it has a record of spammy emails in the, uh, in the past, and unfortunately, it has unverified DNS record. Now, what happens when these two companies launch their campaign at the same time? How many of you think that what was company campaign is going to perform better than the affiliate blogger? Please raise your hands. Okay. Yes. Okay. So yes, it is going to slightly perform better than the affiliate bloggers because it has some good things. But the maximum potentials that it could have achieved won't be able to achieve. Why? Because the receiving domain will get a good quality emails as well as the bad quality of emails. But they are coming from the same IP. So you need to put some kind of filter there. So as a result, that IP gets flagged and the WordPress ca company campaigns are going to be affected. So by getting a dedicated IP, what, what you get is only you can send an email from that IP. And by, by doing so, you can ensure that you have a very good domain reputations. And uh, it also isolates you from the bad neighbors because no one is going to send an email from that IP. As a result, you will have a very improved deliverability. And it is also considered very good for if you are running any kind of automations or sending an email to the high volume of contacts. Now, one of the main goals that you run an email campaign is to obviously convert your customers. All the effort is wasteless uh, if your campaigns doesn't convert. So let's look into some of the techniques that I use for the conversion. One is whenever somebody signs up for your email campaign, make sure that you build your brand trust first. Don't start sending promotional email. I have, whenever I s download some of the free company products, I receive so many promotional email right away. Which sometimes is good, but it's better to avoid. What you can do is try to introduce your product, your company, so they get to know more about you. Provide some kind of uh, 
back story of your products. Provide them with the resources that can actually help them to get started using your product. In this way, the customer will feel that, hey, this email campaign really provides me a value. And they will engage with your content. They will excitedly, excite, uh, uh, will be excited to wait for your next email. And when you start providing value to your customers through your emails, they're going to be a long-term customers for you. And when you send any kind of emails, we should only keep two things in mind. One, your email campaign should provide at least any kind of value to them. And make sure you also include the targeted call to actions wherever possible. Because when they see the value, then it is easier for you to motivate the people to take an action. Next, we all have very short attention span. Due to different social medias, we easily get distracted. Even your customers will be receiving more than 100 emails on a regular basis. They don't have time to read all the content that is available in their email. And they cannot go through all the emails they receive. But if you keep your emails short and precise to the point which will take them less than a couple of seconds just to read, then they will be able to get what you are trying to offer and they are more likely to take the actions that you want them to take. So try to be short and precise and take them direct to the call to action. We human always seek for validations. If you want to really convert to the customers, what you can do is include some kind of good reviews about your product. Uh, most of the companies offer like, hey, sign up for the pro version. Here are 30% deals, and that's it. But what if you can also include some of the testimonials within that email content? What it does is it will establish the credibility of your product. Hey, when the people read other comments, they will feel more confident to grab this deal. So make sure you include some kind of social proof. It can be screenshot or the text itself. And this will highly help to convert. And another technique, just like I mentioned, try to use uh, scarcity or create a sense of urgency through an email. You can use some kind of timer within your content or uh, like have some kind of number within your subject line. People have the fear of pissing out. So if your email content highlights that they might take the necessary actions and who knows the conversion might be even be better. Another thing that you should also do is your customers are going to receive an email at a different time. And they might not take the desired action that you intend them to. So what you can also do is you can send them a general follow-up email so that they will be reminded that, hey, you missed this offer, grab the offer for a limited time. and this actually helps and this has this is something we always do for all our email campaigns and it has really worked well i talked about different techniques for the open rate and conversion but do the technique really work how many of you have doubts is there anyone okay uh, glad to hear so I've been using this technique in the company and it has really worked. And here are some of the top results that I want to share with you. So this is one of the email campaign that I run for the company for uh, one of our services. And it has a massive 64% of open rate and 11% of a click rate, which is way more than this st uh, industry standards. Uh, here is another email campaign that runs on automations, uh, which is sent to almost a small segment of audience, uh, like 8,000 contacts. 
which has a massive open rate of 26% and a 3% click rate. Here's another example, which has been sent to almost 8,000 of customers, which has a good open rate of 46% and 6% click rate. So if you use this technique effectively for your business, I'm sure you're going to see a massive improvement in your current campaigns. If you are doing that, uh, if you are already doing this, great. If you are not doing that, try implementing some of the techniques that you can implement and feel free to share some of the results in the future whenever we are connected. Now, we talked about what are the things we should do, but we should never forget what are the things we should avoid. So let's look at things you should avoid if you're running any kind of email campaign. First and foremost thing, never use any kind of poor or misleading subject line. Your subject lines should be related to the content. Sometimes I receive a clickbait email campaigns and what I do next? I immediately unsubscribe because I don't feel it good when I'm being tricked. So people don't like to be treated like that one. So avoid using poor or misleading subject line. You don't want to irritate your customers by sending too many of emails. Control the number of emails you send to them on a monthly basis. On a regular, on a monthly basis, you can send up to two to five emails which is considered a healthy volume of emails. Avoid sending long and complex email. Try to be precise as much as possible and to the point. And never send an email to your customers without, any, without their consent. Never buy an email list and always get their consent. If you don't, you're more likely to get into legal troubles. Next, never ignore uh, some of the email regulations. For example, you should always have an unsubscribe link and the address in the footer of all the emails that you sent. If you don't have one, make sure you do that immediately and check that you have this one. If you are caught, then most likely your email are going to be in the spam or even your email service provider may suspend your account. Last but not the least, never, never send an email using no reply sender address. You want your customers to interact with you. By no reply, you are sending them the bad signal that, hey, you shouldn't reply to my email. So never use that one. And it is not considered professional for sending no reply uh, emails through the no reply email address. Uh, these are some of the things that you should avoid. And based on how you are running the campaign, there might be many other things that you should avoid for sure. Now, there are different tools that you can use. And here are some of the tools that I use. I use Brevo, formerly known as Send in Blue, for managing or sending my email campaigns. I find it very easy to use and cost effective. And I have been using this for more than uh, three years. I write all my email content first in Google Docs and fix the grammatical mistake using Grammarly. And I use ChatGPT to just fine tune the email content. In some of the email templates, we also send a, a video to link or just explain the feature that we are sending them in the update. So for that purpose, we use Loom for recording the tutorial itself and for creating different kinds of creative banners for the uh, email campaign, we use Figma. And uh, these are the tools and feel free to use any kind of tools that uh, will help you to run your email campaign effectively. Uh, that's it. So that's a wrap. If you'd like to connect with me, here's my LinkedIn address. You can search me just by giving my name. And now, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask.